Some people do not believe that non-human primates are able to communicate using human language. However, non-human primates can actually effectively communicate with each other and humans using various different forms of communication, including gestural cues and specific displays of body language. Being one of our closest relatives, chimpanzees have a brain capacity relatively close in size to ours, but a lack of neural intelligence in certain areas of the brain limits their ability to speak using dialect to the extent humans do. Besides humans, no other primates can speak. There has been controversy regarding the reasons why non-human primates are unable to speak, but scientists have narrowed it down. There was the idea that primates had an inadequate larynx and vocal tract for speaking. However, research has been done, and scientists have come to realize that primates actually do have the proper vocal anatomy for speech. This discovery has led scientists to uncover that non-human primates do not have enough brain power for speech. According to Jacob Dunn, a zoologist at Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge, the primate vocal tract is speech-ready, but most species don't have the neural control to make the complex sounds that comprise human speech. The ability to speak does not come down to the vocal anatomy of a primate, but to their neural networks. This limitation only goes so far. In the 1940s and 50s, Keith and Catherine Hayes adopted a chimpanzee and raised her as their own. They wanted to attempt to teach her human language. The chimpanzee that they named Vicky overcame the cranial restrictions. After a period of rigorous training, Vicky began to produce novel sounds and eventually learned how to manipulate her lips that resulted in her first word, mama. Before her death, Vicky had learned to say up to seven words, including cup, up, and papa. Vicky could use the words accurately, although she did sometimes confuse them. The work done by the Hazes proved that the non-human primates could express themselves through language if enough effort was applied. Communication in general is not as specialized of a human characteristic as one might think. In the wild, non-human primates have been known to exhibit abilities to communicate through the use of autonomic and intentional behaviors and displays. This is often exhibited through gestures, facial expressions, postures, and vocalizations. Hair raising or enhanced production of body odor are examples of unintentional responses to stimuli. Commonly, primates use communication to indicate emotions, presence of potential threats, and social order. Fighting, reconciliation, and submission are key to establishing dominance hierarchies, which play a major role in their culture as well. Primates must pick up on direct and indirect cues to gain a clear understanding of their changing social environment. While the sharing of complex ideas is typically thought to be uniquely human, apes have exemplified pre-thought and problem-solving skills to aid in their unique adaptation, separating them from other animals. Like humans, non-human primates learn behavior from one another and thus are able to adapt and increase their repertoire of skills when it comes to tasks such as attaining food or communicating. In doing so, primates' culture develops and differs among various groups based on the skills that have become commonplace among one another. Learning to use tools such as long sticks to reach termites and termite mounds or rocks to open clamshells are both indicative of apes' ability to adapt to issues and convey successful solutions over large groups. While social and environmental conditions both contribute to the adapted use of communication and enhanced cognitive abilities, it has been said that gestural communication that of voluntary movement or sounds, must have been vital to the development of language in humans. As primates remain our closest living relatives, the study of ape communication in the wild and their ability to learn remains extremely relevant to anthropologists today in their search for answers as to the origin of human language. Washoe was a female chimpanzee who was advanced in the world of American Sign Language. She was taken in by the gardeners who treated her as their own child. When she was around 10 months old, she started to learn the art of American Sign Language. She was always a very intelligent primate. In total, she used about 170 ASL signs. She even created her own signs for items that she had not been taught signs for. For example, she famously signed Waterbird for Swan or Open Food Drink for Refrigerator. Along with making up her own signs for objects, she also made up her own empathetic signs, one of which being signing Hurt, There, Come when Roger, another chimpanzee who was under her care, broke his arm. The gardeners noticed Washoe's motherly instinct and decided that she would be a good fit to act as a mother to Lulise, a young chimp whose mother was incapable of raising him due to the bolts that were in her head. This adoption turned out to be beneficial for both Lulise and Washoe. 
As soon as Washo was introduced to Lulis, she began teaching him to communicate with sign language. Since Lulis was only around 10 months old when he met Washo, the way he would learn to sign would be slower and more hands-on. Washo started with teaching Lulis come by signing it to him and then approaching him and pulling him close. After a few days, she would sign come and approach him without touching. Then, a few days later, she would sign come and face him until he came to her. Washo took the slow approach and was able to teach Lulis sign language so he could communicate with her and others around them. Another approach Washo took when trying to teach Lulis was the molding technique. Molding occurs when an instructor takes the hand of a pupil and molds them into the site while putting them through the movement. In one instance, Washo was waiting for a candy bar from a friend and signed food repeatedly with much excitement and food grunts. Lulis was sitting next to her watching. Washo stopped signing, took Lulis's hand, and molded it into the food configuration and put it through the food movement several times. This technique gave Lulis a new way of learning and bettered his understanding of the sign and what it meant. One very specific and notorious example of a chimpanzee using language to communicate with humans is a chimp trained by Sue Savage Rumbaugh. This chimpanzee, Kanzi, is classified as a bonobo, a distinct species within the Pan family. Kanzi is known for being one of the most intelligent non-human primates or even animals to ever understand and communicate more human language than any other non-human animal in the world. Much like English-speaking human children, Kanzi grew up with a primal language of English, living in an environment surrounded by human adults practicing English regularly. Living a life under the guidance of Sue Savage Rumbaugh, Kanzi has been able to cultivate his communication in human language using a lexigram board, much like his bonobo adoptive mother, Matata. A lexigram board is a digital board covered in an array of keys denoting symbols, whereby each symbol represents a specific word. This particular lexigram, when utilized properly, vocalizes each word out loud when pressed. This allows Kanzi to communicate with researchers around him and further allows Kanzi to expand his own vocabulary by first hearing what he is trying to communicate out loud. When Rumba asks Kanzi specific questions, such as, Can you make the dog bite the snake? Kanzi is able to use the lexigram board to create responses to Rumba's questions. Using this specific method, Kanzi is able to understand and answer over 500 English spoken sentences produced by his caretakers. His responses to these questions are created with about 150 lexigram symbols, giving Kanzi the ability to create what have been called sentence-like strings. Most formal linguists may be of the opinion that Kanzi's use of a lexicon does not constitute using human language, but the sheer use of a lexicon to communicate does in fact demonstrate evidence of the extensive potential of Kanzi's brain. One of the most important factors to consider while evaluating Kanzi's accomplishments is the process in which he learned to use language. Kanzi learned language primarily through being surrounded by people using it just as human children. This is considered important because it exemplifies a non-human primate's ability to learn and understand in the same way that humans do through the formative years of their lives.